Hey, Crazy Willie here today. Today we're gonna be talking about how to airbrush 3D printed models. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you my process. We're gonna paint Groot! Hey, Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, well, I'm gonna show you guys how to airbrush. 3D printed models, that's what we wanna to do today. You guys really liked my last video on just basic 3D printing model. And today we're gonna to do Baby Groot. I'm gonna recommend if you do want to airbrush, I would go bigger models, they're easier to airbrush, especially if you're getting started. As you get better, you'll have more control over the airbrush and you could possibly do smaller models. So I chose Groot because he's gonna be basically two different colors that we're gonna airbrush and I'm gonna show you a little techniques that I use to airbrush and I'm gonna show you how to actually use an airbrush and then and how to apply it and basically make some cool shading on this character. Now you might be wondering, hey Will, you did a really good video and you showed that you have basic painting skills in the last one, but what do you know about airbrushing? Well, I did go to school for airbrushing. It was a technical institute and I learned how to airbrush. I did quite a bit of airbrushing and I actually purchased Iowata Eclipse airbrush, which I'm still using to this day. So I highly recommend Iowata. It still works like a dream. And I I have airbrushed a couple of my 3D prints and probably the one I'm most proud of is this Wolverine. It, I think it came out really good and as you can see with a brush you just can't get these, you can see his abs and his muscles, you just can't kind of get that. You can only get that, that hazy soft shadowing kind of look with an airbrush. And that's when it really comes into play is you can get these muscles looking really good. So this I actually airbrushed, took quite a bit of time, spent a lot of time on it. One of my first 3D prints that I airbrushed was Alice in Wonderland from the video game. And then I did a weird model that I found and it's actually an oriental cartoon. God, I forgot the name of that character but found a picture of her and I decided to keep it true to her. And that one was very challenging. I had a lot of problems getting the paint just right and I spent way too much time on that one but I think it came out okay. All right, enough of me talking. Let's get over into the garage and I'll show you my setup. And All right, so let's start with the setup. It's a very modest setup. It's an airbrush. It's a little Lazy Susan. It's a light right here and all this is is a plastic box turned on its side and then this is a regular work light that I just have beaming down so I could see what I'm doing. And then I made out of a hanger just a little airbrush holder. And then I have a little heat gun here which is optional, it's just to cure the paints faster so that way you can move on to the next coat. Another thing I highly recommend is you get yourself a little bowl and I have jugs and jugs of water which behind my setup here I have a bucket that I could dump the water in. I do not have running water out in the garage, so what I do is I use the jugs of water, fill this up so I can spray clean the airbrush, which I'll show you how to do. The biggest thing with an airbrush is keeping it clean. That's will give you the longevity and the best work. A lot of you guys commented on my last video. You really liked my little holder for my figures. All it is is this little fun tack, a top to a spray can of paint. That's all that is. That's a top to a spray can of paint. And that way you can keep your hands off the figures and you could just move it the way you want. And the Lazy Susan will come in handy when you're trying to airbrush your character so that way you don't have to touch it. Another thing that you're going to need is a compressor. I have a regular little work compressor that I use with a connector on it. You only need 20 PSI. So if you have a regular compressor at home that you use for a nail gun or something like that, as long as you can lower the pressure down to 20 PSI, that's what I usually work in. You can go as high. I wouldn't because you don't want it blowing over your character or you don't want it blowing too much paint. So it definitely wouldn't do that. But you just want a little compressor. Another Another thing that you want to worry about is cleaning your airbrush. What I use, I bought these little simple containers. I fill it up with Windex and 50% alcohol and that's how I clean my airbrush and it makes a quick airbrush cleaner. If you don't feel like making your own airbrush cleaner, a lot of companies make their own airbrush cleaner and you can use that as well and then just put it in one of these bottles so that we could just spray it through the airbrush. Another nifty thing that I purchased way back when and this is my Iowa Eclipse, way old airbrush, works great. They make amazing airbrushes. I would put this in it and this is just a little check valve that collects water. I forget what it's called and I'll put the name of it right here. It's a little check valve and you open it up to release water. If you see water coming into your airbrush, you can drain it out with this. This catches it and then you can drain it out every once in a while. It's just a good thing. It's not absolutely necessary, but it stops spurts from air pressure building up. It makes moisture and then it could go through the airbrush and when you're airbrushing, you can see the splattering and you don't want that effect. I threw a regular connection to a regular compressor on the end of this and I'm going to plug it up and we're going to get going on this. 
Okay, so just to recap, Groot was actually done with an FDM printer, and if you don't know the difference between resin and an FDM printer, please take a look at my video right here. But he was FDM printed on an Ender 3. I like Rust-Oleum's products. They don't sponsor me. I just, it's the only stuff that seems to be working for me. I use their two-in-one filler and sandable primer. Been using this to fill in those layer lines on these characters so that way they're less visible I mean they're still visible you could see I mean he's not perfect but it's less visible and then once you add the paint to it it's a lot less visible alright so once you have the airbrush hooked up we're gonna go ahead and clean it up so what we want to do but haven't used it in a while is we take off the back end and then we take the needle out and you just unscrew this back point here most airbrushes are the same we pull that needle out and we wipe it down and you're gonna push this back in like so push it back in and we're just making sure it's clean and what we're gonna do is we're gonna rinse this out and I put my little bucket that's usually on the side right here I put it out here so you guys could see it and what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray through and as we're spraying through we're gonna take our finger and put it over the end of the airbrush to force some of the liquid to push outward out of this and that's how we're gonna clean it so when you see me cleaning it it's gonna be me putting it in pushing it down and all the way back and then I'm gonna be pushing my finger on it and you'll hear it doing that and I'll do that quite a few times and you want to make sure both both the nose and this is in the water while you do that. That's how you clean out your airbrush. You want to do that a couple times and you want to do that in between colors or if you see that you're having problems with the airbrush, which you will see that throughout the video. All right, so I pulled up some reference material that I'm going to be looking at on my phone and I put in Baby Groot. It looks like we have a really dark brown in between those crevices. It'll be easier for me just to paint him all dark brown and then go with this lighter color, which is almost a creamy kind of brown. So that's what I'm going to go for and that way I can lighten him up and I don't have to worry about it and I can get those dark tones right away. So I'm gonna go from dark to light. Now, in some cases, you wanna go from light to dark depending on certain scenarios. So for example, if you remember the Wolverine, I actually went light and then I went dark. This one, I'm gonna go dark and then light just cause he has a lot of nooks and crevices that it'd be easier just to try and get the darkness in there instead of me trying to airbrush in between those little veins that he has. All right, so I'm gonna try, actually, I'm not using Vallejo, I'm actually using the Master Series paint. It was a paint kit that I got. It's actually a paint kit that I bought. And I'm actually gonna use that brown because it's a lot darker brown. So I wanna go with that really dark brown. What we're gonna be using is, mine's a bottom feed airbrush. Yours will probably be a top feed. I bought these little cups and I recommend buying a couple of these and I'll leave a link down below. I don't get anything for it. I'm just sharing. But these are the cups that I use and they just fit right at the bottom there. The reason why we're using these opposed to these is not unless you're going to pour all your paint into this a little drip type of containers opposed to these and you can even 3d print your own i did that so basically if you push down you're just shooting out air if you push back you're pushing the needle back and you're adding more color so the more you push back the more color will spurt out for example i'm going to fill this up and i'm going to go ahead and show you on a piece of paper all right so we loaded up the airbrush if we push down on it nothing comes out as you can see but as you push back, you'll notice some more and more. And the farther you push back, the more color you will add. Now, the farther away you are, the more it'll mist. The closer you are, the more it'll penetrate that color. So you want to try and get a happy medium. And I just like to do stripes. I like to just draw stripes. Just to try and get a flow and kind of get my distance and... See, the farther out you go, the less, the more of a, a mist it is, the closer you get in, the tighter it gets, you, the higher you open it up. I can go back farther now, and I can mist it, or I can get up close, and if I were in a real detail line, see how you can push and pull. So push down is air, straight air and then going back will add more paint. It's almost like a cone. You want to picture a cone going out. The closer you get to it, the tighter the cone, and the, the less you have to push back into it. The farther back you go, the more of the cone. And the cone goes by the size of how much pressure that you're pushing back and adding more flow and more pigment. So if I'm back here, and I just add a little bit, you'll see there's just a little bit. And then if I have big, it'll get bigger. That's how an airbrush works. So with that said, we're gonna be doing just a broad paint job on him right now. So this is actually watered down enough that it goes through the airbrush quite well.
there's all the base color right now. So just a plain old brown, which it's really good for quick and easy placement of paint. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and clean the airbrush, just like I showed you before. Bring this over so you guys can see. As you can see, the water gets really misty. And we're just gonna push down on that, let that come out like so. We're gonna go ahead and pull out the airbrush needle. Wipe that down. I like to dip it in here again without the airbrush needle in it. Clean that out, put the needle back in. Push it back in. And clean it up like so. Put it back together. Now we're ready for the next color. I'm not gonna go ahead and clean this out just yet because I might need to use it again to clean up some of my mistakes on the next phase. So now I'm up to a lighter color. This one feels a little thicker, so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna water it down with the Vallejo. This is the MSP Bones Woodland Bone, the airbrush thinner in here. And I do, generally, they say it's like 50-50. I only do a couple drops, if you guys can see that. Just fill it up to the nose. And then I pour some of this in there. I'll shake this up nice. And it just makes it nice and thin. You want to try to make it like almost like a milky consistency that goes through the airbrush. I'm going to use this for the highlights. This is going to be a lot lighter. Keep a couple of these around. We'll mix. All right, so we have that loaded. So we're going to go ahead and load this up like so. And what I'm going to go for is I'm going to go towards the wood grain and I'm going to try and put in some nice detail. I'm going to start on the back of the head here just because I want to see what it's going to turn out to look like. And I need the light on to see what I'm doing. So I know it makes it a little darker for you guys. All right, his face, we're not really gonna go with a grain. We're gonna try and just highlight it a little bit. Try and get in some more detail. All right, I'm gonna turn up the pressure on the airbrush just a little bit more, but it's kind of getting what I want it to look like. Up this up to like 30. All right, there we go. We get a little more. Let's see if we can get this to work. A little bit more. We're um, accustomed to our guy. So I think I got a wood kind of grain thing going on there. Let me get some more. Going with a lighter look on his face. I think that's coming out pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna go for his body. This, we're gonna actually gonna pick it up and we're gonna go in here and try to follow the plates. See how the plates are right there? Let's see. Let's see if I can get in there and do that. I'm just trying to follow some of the design. All right, so there are cases where the brush is getting stocked up. I can't get enough paint out. What you need to do is just take it off. We'll go ahead and clean it out. Chances are paint is actually staying on. See how the end looks really, a lot of paint, a lot of problems. We're gonna clean that off like so. Put it back in, grab that airbrush cleaner, clean it out a little bit. All right, now we're nice and clean. We can go back to the airbrush again. All right, 
so now we're gonna go back that's why I told you to hold on to this we're gonna go back to the darker brown again and we're gonna go over some of the highlights and try to hide some of them so we'll just go in here and just draw in some the darker Unfortunately, my camera got cut off in the middle of me airbrushing that, but I was just adding more dark colors to the highlights, and I think he came out really good. I think it has a nice wood tone, and he's a fun character, so I don't want to go too crazy with too much detail. So now we're going to go over to the workbench, and we're going to finish hand painting him from this point on. So the airbrush is done, and like I said, I know what you guys are thinking. You're probably like, oh, I wanted to learn how to airbrush. This was just the basics and introductory to airbrushing, so this was very basic way to get started on airbrushing, so I really think you should take the time out and really just learn how to do the darks and the highlights and that way you can get a nice look and now what we're going to do is we're going to clean out the airbrush like i showed you earlier and i already got my pods dipping in water here and i'm going to clean all this stuff up and i will not bore you with the details with that the only thing i will tell you is make sure you clean out with this with the airbrush that's what i use i already cleaned out this airbrush cleaner through it like so and just check up in there and make sure that it's clear of paint and that's the biggest thing you want to do with this make sure this is nice and clean and what I like to do is take some WD-40 just in case there is any paint left in there and stick it in there and spray a little bit gently spray it through the airbrush and that way it's lubricated that way if there is paint it won't freeze up and that, that way it's nice and lubricated why we put it away and we don't use it for probably another month we got everything airbrushed I think he came out pretty good and like I said we could airbrush the eyes and outline them it's just easier to hand paint them and I'm just gonna show you that all right so we're gonna take this original brown that we used to do all the dark parts of Groot. I'm going to take some Vallejo Black. These colors actually mix well, pretty well, and I'm just going to put a dab off to the side. If you mix with your brushes, that's what happens to them. It gets very frilly and nasty. Look. I'm going to mix some of this brown in with the black and see if I can make an even darker. His eye is almost a, a blackish, darkish color, and that's what I want to go for, and that's kind of what I created there. I'm going to take a really nice detail brush, lay, lay him down, and what I want to do is take this brown, and I'm going to get the corners of his eyes. And the reason why I'm using a detail brush, and I'm just not using a big brush, which we're going to go over it with a big brush, is because once you airbrush, it's hard to fix mistakes. So we kind of have to be really gentle on what we do. Now his eyes are filled in. We're going to let those dry. I want to also fill in his mouth with that same dark color. I filled in the mouth. You can see that there. And I'm gonna take this pencil and I'm gonna draw in his eyes where I would want them to lay. And he has very large black areas of the eyes. So I'm gonna try and see if I can get that correct. See, like that. I think that'll look good. All right, so that's a little indication of where I want his eyes to be. So we're gonna go ahead and paint in pure black. And I'm using Vallejo Black. All right, so the eyes are done, looks pretty good. Now we're gonna add a little color. And you're gonna take a dry brush like this, a bigger broad dry brush, and we're gonna just dab some green. The green I'm using is right here, it's just flat green. And we're gonna dry brush this. And it looks like in the picture, he has some green going on at the top. So kind of like moss. So we're gonna go for that look. So hopefully I don't screw this up. put this out so you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm just dabbing it with a dry brush and you're just mushing it on, just tapping it, trying to give it that almost like moss growing on a log kind of thing going on here. I think that's working out pretty well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it actually in here too because it looks like in the pictures he has it in there too. So we'll kind of sporadically put it inside the top of his head like it's growing off 
in the middle here. We're gonna kind of try and get the tips to move over into it to try to make it look like it's growing in there. Now, just to add a little bit more to the moss color, I wanna add some mustard yellow. And we're gonna go ahead and just kind of put it right over the color that I already am mushing in here. And I'm not even gonna clean the brush because I want it to kind of mix in. Let's see how this will look. We'll do it on the back first just to get an idea. I'm not sure I'm liking that. It's coming off too strong. So I mixed the yellow in with the green. We're gonna cover this up now. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Back of his head, I'm gonna try and just fudge this a little bit down and see if I can get away with it. Just like maybe the moss just grew up too much around there. All right, so I liked it enough that I started doing some of his foot and I'm gonna do bottoms of his feet and I'm gonna just randomly put moss around him. I think it's, I was looking at pictures and I think it's just gonna be a good idea. I'm gonna try not to go too crazy, but I think it looks pretty good as far as moss goes. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sparingly put it around the bottom of his feet because he's probably walking around and getting moss all over stuff and we'll just, we'll put some stuff here, but we'll just, we'll play a little bit guys. Just, you know, this is you're experimenting a lot, you know, do highlights with it, like the top here, I'm gonna go a little crazy, maybe on his chest there a little bit, there's a little moss growing there. Alright, not too crazy, you don't want to get him too green, but I think that looks pretty cool. I was messing around, I can't help myself, uh, you know, I can get creative, you want to start, keep going. I did his foot where I outlined it a little bit with the same color that I used to make the eyes, which was a brown and a black. I'll show you what I did. I just went in there and I just placed it in there and just rode the crack right up. We'll do it to this side too. We'll just drag it right down the middle there. Kind of separate it because if you look at the pictures, that's actually like a bunch of twigs twined together to make his foot. So we're gonna try and give it that effect. And then what I did was I lightly took some paint and I just went around the edges. I just tapped it. I just went like that. And just gave it just a little more of a, a hint of a foot. All right, so we're gonna finish this off now and we're gonna be using white by Vallejo. I think I wanna just do one of these types of brushes, just a bigger one, it's a size three. We're gonna take that white, make it nice and thick on the end, and I'm gonna go for a highlight on the eye. And if I don't like it, I could always go back on it with black. So there is the finished product. I'm done painting him. The next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and clear coat him once he's good and dry. So I'm gonna let him dry for a day and then I'm gonna go ahead and put a nice clear coat over him. All right, so that's basically how to airbrush, guys. It's been a couple days. I've been having problems with rain, too coldness. You wanna make sure that when you put the clear coat, cause I gotta clear coat this thing. I use Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Coat, the 2X. Shake it up really good. You gotta make sure that the humidity is not high, otherwise you will get wrinkling on your your print so I'm having problems with humidity and I'm having problems you don't want it to be too cold so that's why I haven't finished this project yet it's been several days and we got a cold streak coming through here so I can't finish this off right yet so I want to end this video and get it out to you guys but this is what I use to clear coat it do a mist first and then after it dries for about an hour two hours I put a heavy coat over it afterwards so that way the colors don't run and I showed that in my other video that's basically a done airbrushed print that's it for me guys Guys, make sure you like, subscribe if this helped you in any way. And remember, you can ring that bell so that we can get notifications of when my next video comes out. And remember, you could do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys! Uh, I did his foot. I kind of did like... Oh. It's over. That's it, guys. I mean, there's other videos up there. Or if you want to do me a huge favor, click the like button or subscribe button's even better. 